<laughs> so shells and subshells. So every atom. So let's just start with hydrogen. Right, let's start with hydrogen first. Okay, if we just look at a hydrogen atom. Let's first focus on this shell model. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna leave off the nucleus and I'm gonna rather rather than draw it as a series of spheres, I'm just gonna draw it as a well. All right, where the one closest to the would be n is equal to one. Right. And then we have another at n is equal to two, and we have another n is equal to three, and another at n is equal to four, and they get closer and closer together. Now, these are the prime principal quantum numbers. They're this number that represents the energy. Right? So this is the, sort of the energy separation. <clears throat> the presence of these alternate lines, these other lines, mean that within each shell, there are subshells. So this is our, our first shell. And then, of course, we have our subshells, which share the same average energy as our shell. It turns out that the number of subshells is equal to n. So, for instance, in the first, there's only one subshell. And we give this designation, this subshell, the following designation, S. Call it an S subshell. All of the subshells, the first subshell is an S subshell. But there's two in the second one. This is what we call the P subshell, an S, a P, and a D. All right. And then there's an S, a P, a D, and an F subshell. And then the fifth one, S, P, D, F, and G. Right. And again, each of these subshells, so we have the shell and the subshell, again, we can, then we can think of them as like different rooms in an apartment, or different um, apartments in an apartment complex. Every shell has a set of subshells. And then on top of that, within each subshell, there are locations that we call orbitals. So then we have the orbital level. And the orbitals reside in the particular subshell. And each subshell has a varying number of orbitals. For instance, an S subshell has one orbital. P subshell has three orbitals. And just to make matters even more interesting, every orbital, again, you can think of it as the rooms within the apartment, can hold a maximum of two electrons. So the shell represents the average energy. When each of the orbitals, there are multiple subshells. And the number of those subshells depends on the energy. So this is your standard one electron atom and has this sort of arrangement. So how do we tell the S's apart? How do we tell the P's apart? Well, we describe them using a description that includes the principal energy level and the letter designation for the subshell. So for instance, this particular subshell would be considered a 2s subshell. Additionally, we can describe the number of electrons that reside in that subshell using a little number up in the upper right hand corner. But for now, we can just call 2s and 2p. 
So this would represent a 3D subshell. Not all subshells exist in a given energy level. Principal quantum number n equal to 2 does not have a d subshell. Ds don't start until the third energy level. F doesn't start until the fourth. After F, they all get they're all labeled alphabetical. E F G H I J K. All right, though not there aren't any known elements that have a G and H subshells. All right, that, they, they, they <clears throat> if it's empty, does it exist? The answer is yes. It's still there, but there's none that are filled with electrons. These represent locations where electrons can reside. And if you remember what we talked about, uh, that the number of electrons within the shell, number of electrons that reside within this shell, all reside in these orbitals and these subshells. So the orbital is where the electrons actually exist. So where the electrons exist is in the orbitals. These little subdivisions, again, apartment, apartment complex analogy. This would represent the floor, this would represent the apartment, and this would represent the room within the apartment. All, right? all of them together describe the unique location of the electron. In practice, this would represent the relative energy, geometry. So this one's sort of arrangement slash geometry. And this is how it's aligned within the how it's aligned in the atom. Alright, so that's for a one electron atom. Now we run into a slight problem. When you start to add multiple electrons, the electrons interact with one another. They're negative charges, and so they repel one another. So you end up with deviations in energy within the subshell. So how does this look in reality? Well, I'm just gonna I'm, I'm gonna avoid the first um, primary energy level. I'm just gonna focus on the subshell, and I'm gonna label them. So in the first energy level, we have a 1s subshell. No big deal. And we have a 2s subshell. And slightly higher in energy are the 2p subshell. It's a 2p subshell. Now remember, it turns out that the 2p subshell has three orbitals within it, three different rooms in which the electron can reside. The 3s, and of course, the 3ps. And then slightly higher in energy than that are the three Ds. It turns out that a D subshell has five orbitals. Again, an S has one orbital. Now, now we get into a slight deviation. The four S subshell happens to be a little bit lower in energy than the 3D subshell. What that means is that these subshells get thicker and thicker and thicker, but yet the average energy doesn't increase as quickly, and so you start to get interpenetration of the subshells, such that the 4S subshell becomes lower in energy than 3D subshells. While the average energy of the n is equal to 3 energy level is lower than the average energy of the n is equal to 4 energy level, that's the average. The individual subshells that make up that can actually be lower in energy. And we see this show up, particularly when we deal with d orbitals and f orbitals. So the 4s is slightly lower in energy, but then the 4p comes along and it's actually higher in energy than the 3d. 
then we have our 4D, and then there's a 4F over here. Again, we do see that we see the same problem with the higher energy systems. The 5S is lower in energy than the 4D. and then there's a 5D up here. Etc. Right. And you end up with a sort of a situation where the 6S sort of below both the 5D and the 4F. Right. And it keeps going up from there. Oh my gosh, how am I going to remember all this? Let me show you how you're going to remember it. This. Remember this thing? The periodic table? It turns out that the arrangement of the orbitals is based upon the periodic table. Or maybe I should rephrase that. The arrangement of the periodic table is based upon orbital energies. Let me show you what I mean when we get to it, when we, when we talk about electron configuration. The orbitals exist within these shells, and those, again, are average energies based upon this principal quantum number. But because of this spreading out due to shielding, which we'll talk about, due to shielding, the spreading out of the subshells leads to this broadening of our energy levels within the atom, leading to interpenetration, such that some subshells are higher in energy than the next principal quantum number's lowest subshell. Again, where we see this particularly is with the 4s and the 3d, and any sd combo that you'll see, they almost always have an energy level lower than the nearest d electrons. Right? But we see this throughout the periodic table. And we'll come back to that in a few minutes. Right? So subshells exist, and they have this spread out, particularly in the multi-electron atom. 